Oscar Peterson was born on August the 15th, 1925, in a small limestone house in Saint-Henri, the hub of Montreal's black community. He was the fourth of five children. We always got along well, but as youngsters growing up, well, we weren't allowed to be hanging out in the streets playing, so we had to find entertainment at home. Oscar's father, Daniel Peterson, taught himself to play the organ while serving aboard a merchant ship in the early 1900s. Convinced that music was his children's only escape from poverty, Daniel bought the family a piano that he could not afford. On a railway porter's salary, he had to sacrifice necessities like food and clothing. I think my dad one day at the dinner table discovered that I had some kind of pitch recognition due to clicking coffee cups and glasses, you know, and went to the piano and checked it. And I said, that's, I think that's an A or an E or an F sharp or something. And they found out that way. I didn't even know what they were talking about, really. In the 1930s, blacks in Canada experienced a hushed form of oppression. For the Petersons, music was an escape from dead-end jobs on the railroad and a shot at a better life. They formed a family band, entertaining at church and social events. Not to be conceited, but we were actually better than the average kids. So, and of course, we had the gold, golden star ahead of us, Oscar, so everything was, the Petersons are going to play, the Petersons are going to play. During one session, Oscar was told to try the trumpet instead of the piano. He was thrilled with the instrument, something he never felt plunking away on the keyboard. But tuberculosis, the great epidemic killer of the 1930s, devastated the Peterson family. His brother Fred died. Oscar, just seven, and sister Daisy fought for their lives. I spent a year and a month in the Children's Memorial Hospital there. And when I came home, the doctor said, I don't want him playing any wind instruments. It's not good for his lungs. So I went back to piano. Peterson's incredible technique was nurtured at an early age by two influential piano teachers, jazz pianist Lou Hooper and classical virtuoso Paul DeMarkey. And Lou, or Mr. Hooper as I called him, and, uh, used, used to work at music. He was a player in a group. And he got to the point with me where I was busy